uh, but if I actually um, can't get to your question or I don't see it because I'm too busy talking, I will get to your questions afterwards. So put your questions in here and I'll get around to them. Uh -huh. Hey, Redbeth, yeah, I like me better upright too. I don't know, it's like you'd have to, have to watch me sideways otherwise. Um, and Linda's back. All right, so here's what I'm going to do today. Uh, my whole theme today is keep the keto stupid simple. I think that uh, too many people, <laughs> seriously, this is what I have to put up with every day. Like, too many people, honey, you're, you're like really breaking my train of <laughs> I guess the cameraman gets to do some hijinks, right? Don't go away, honey, I might need help. My whole theme today is how to keep keto really, really simple. So people are overthinking this. There's a whole uh, field out there who benefits from keeping us confused. Let's just be honest, okay? There's a whole industry out there of people who want to make keto sound extremely complicated and extremely difficult. And I'm going to give you, um, hey, hey, Allison, I'm going to give you the simplest way in which to get into ketosis. So we've got about 30 people. I'm going to get going. We can, we can always revisit uh, things. Let me tell you the fastest and easiest and least comfortable way to get into ketosis. And you need to understand why, because you are trying to mimic this. The fastest way to get into ketosis is to stop eating. So, if you are willing to be miserable and make the people around you really miserable by not eating and by starving, you too could be in ketosis. So I'm sure there's some goddesses out there who could do this, I can't, okay, I need to eat. So for me, what I have to do is I have to mimic the conditions that happen when I am starving, when I'm not eating, when I'm not feeding myself. So the first distinction we need to understand is the difference between ketosis, which is a metabolic state, and food, a keto diet, which is a way for us to achieve that metabolic state. Okay, a keto diet is not the same as ketosis. A keto diet is a way in which you can get into ketosis, but there are other ways to get into ketosis. Like I said, fasting is the most effective way to get into ketosis. Okay, so hey, Charlene's here. So you know, Charlene and I are related. It's a long convoluted thing, but I have only gotten to know her and Jessica through my group, and we're actually related on Roger's side of the family. So the group is a wonderful place. Okay, by the way, for those of you who like uh, printables, I have one. I have a geeky one. I will put it up for you afterwards. But going back to ketosis, ketosis is a metabolic state. In this metabolic state, what is happening is you have trained your body to burn fat for fuel. Your body is a lot like me. It's very lazy and very efficient. So if you keep giving it food, if you keep feeding it with things that are quick, easy energy, it's going to use that before it starts to burn fat off your body. Okay. Your job is to make it really, really difficult to get the fuel that it wants from quick sources. Is that making sense? So ketosis is a metabolic state. It's when you're using fat to burn fuel. Your job is to get it to the point where your body has to work hard to burn fuel. Okay, what are some easy sources of fuel? So two of them are very, very easy to understand. One is sugar, simple carbohydrates, glucose, any kind of sugar. Um, and then the other thing is constantly eating. Okay, so to get into ketosis, you have to watch what you eat and you have to watch how often you eat. So, you watch kids run around super high on sugar. I run around super high on sugar. Sugar is very, very easy. So, if you feed your body simple carbs uh, or, or, you know, like sugar, flour, things that it gets energy from potatoes, pasta, bread, it's going to use that instant energy and it's going to get going. And what you're trying to do is not give it that energy. So the reason that you don't eat carbs on keto is you want your body to burn fat. As long as you give it an easy to digest source of energy like carbs, it's not going to burn the fat, okay? Now keep in mind, I'm talking about ketosis for weight loss. There are many reasons people do ketosis. If you're epileptic or you're managing um, you know, cancer, et cetera, et cetera, you should listen to somebody who's a different kind of doctor than me, okay? This is keto for weight loss is what I'm talking about. Now, if you guys have questions, hey, Marion, if you guys have questions, post them because I can actually see questions over here and I will answer them. So there are two ways to get ketones. So your, your job is to use fat for fuel. The way to do that is to not give it too many carbs, which are easy to absorb. And the second way to do that is to not eat all the time. Okay. Now you can get ketones in your body from two sources. One is what you eat, the fat that you eat. And the second is this fat which I have plenty, I'm sure you do too. So if you keep eating it, if you keep eating fat, keep eating carbs, keep eating calories, keep eating all the time, you're never getting into a state where your body has to dig hard to get resources, okay? This is why it doesn't matter just what you eat, but how often you eat. 
Grazing constantly is very, very difficult to be in ketosis if you're going to graze constantly. Okay, here's the other thing. Listen, guys, I tried to lose weight for years and years and years, and I'm a scientist by training. I had tried everything except low carb because I was not a meat eater. But here's what I had to understand, and if somebody had explained this to me, I would have been skinnier a lot sooner. And let me tell you, it would have been fun to have been a lot skinnier when I was single. We all know how that works. Um, anyway, the way, the way you um, have to be able to uh, control your fat burning, here's what you need to understand. Your body is in one of two states. It's either feasting or it's fasting. Feasting, sadly, does not mean eating a lot. It just means eating. When you eat, you get a blood sugar swing. To deal with that blood sugar swing, you get an insulin swing. You're either feasting or you're fasting. If you're feasting, there's insulin in your body. If there's insulin in your body, you're not going to burn fat. Your body can't have an insulin swing and fat burning happening at the same time as one or the other. So ketosis is about reducing the blood swing blood sugar swing and reducing the insulin swing so that you are in a low insulin, low blood sugar spike state so that your body can burn fat. This is very, very critical to understand. If, uh, if I'm not making sense, this is a really, really good time um, to ask a question. Leah, you are not, you, I want you to quit worrying about the protein. I'm going to tell you what, just quit worrying about it. The most important thing to understand is that those macros are a guideline. Food is a guideline. Ketosis is a metabolic state. Your job is to achieve the metabolic state. And the way in which you, particularly Leah, achieves it is not gonna be the way that Urshi achieves it. So we're gonna put aside some of those guidelines and go by what our body is doing for the most part, okay? So you're gonna, you, you have to eat things that don't create a blood sugar spike. What are the things that create a blood sugar spike? Carbs. Carbs are the number one culprit for why our blood sugar goes up and why our insulin goes up. Now keep in mind, type two diabetics, that's what they're trying to control. If they eat carbs, they have to take insulin along with it. Type one's a whole different disease state, we won't talk about that. That is why you're being asked to eat fewer carbs. So you're, again, just to, just to recap your goal in order to get into ketosis. Don't give your body easy to burn fuels. Carbs are the easiest to burn. Eating constantly is an easy way for it to um, not have to dig deep into resources. And then the other thing you want to do is you want to keep your blood sugar from spiking and you want to not be in a state where your body is continuously releasing insulin. Because if you're releasing insulin, you're not burning fat. You're either feasting or fasting. Just remember that. You're either feasting or fasting. If you're feasting, insulin is high. If insulin is high, you're not burning fat. Is that making, is that making sense to everyone? Okay, so Leah, then in which case you're doing great. Yes, so Swapna, I had weight loss surgery which means they cut my stomach down to the size of a banana, okay? I could barely eat anything. And even during that time, the most weight I ever lost was 10 pounds. And I would, there were more day, 10 pounds in a month. There were more days when I was stalled in any given month than I was losing weight. So what's gonna happen is weight loss is not linear. You're gonna drop, then you're gonna stall. Then you're gonna drop, and then you're gonna stall. You cannot control the rate at which your body chooses to lose weight. You can only control what you put or don't put in your mouth. I want you to understand that. You could do everything right and still lose weight a lot slower than everybody else. If you're not eating too many carbs, if you're not eating constantly, if you're not eating too many calories, and you're still not losing weight, do not worry about it until three weeks have gone by. A stall is two to three weeks. It's not one week, it's not two days. I have been stalled for six weeks eating four and 500 calories, okay? So this is, unfortunately, it's a very normal thing. Your body is trying to keep you safe. So I need you to stop worrying about the pace of weight loss. Over time, as long as the chart looks like that, you're doing fine. It took me 10 months to lose 80 pounds, and that was after surgery, and after a very, very strict keto diet. So some of us just don't lose weight that fast. That's all that there is to it. And um, so, uh, um, Mary Beth, I'll answer your question in half a second, okay? Um, so there are four guidelines, and again, these are printed on this um, that I, I'm gonna make available to you. There are four things you need to do. Eat fewer carbs, eat protein wisely. If you're hungry, eat fat. If you're not hungry, don't eat. Don't eat anything, don't eat if you're not hungry. Forget about all those people that tell you about starvation. I'm gonna address that in half a second. Again, let me repeat the four things. Limit your carbs. Now the limit for every person is going to vary. We're gonna address that. Limit your carbs, eat protein wisely, eat fat to fill the edges, 
And if you're not hungry, don't eat, okay? Protein. There's, there's a lot of discussion about uh, you know, protein turning to glucose. Okay, here's the thing. You can't exceed your carbs. By the same token, you should not undereat on protein. The, the research varies on this, and depending on your body type, the protein levels for you might be different, but 0.5 to 0.6 grams of protein per pound of body weight is what is considered healthy. Okay, now if you're an athlete, if you're a mesomorph, if there are other circumstances, you might eat more. So that is a general guideline. Of that, it is true that about, you know, um, 40, 50, 60, or 40 or 50 percent of that might turn into glucose if you overeat protein. Here's what overeating protein is going to mean. Let's say that you, you ingested more than 35 grams of protein per meal. Most of us are not able to absorb more than 35 grams of protein. So what's gonna happen is, instead of ingesting and absorbing that, your body's gonna park it in a fat cell, basically. The nutrients from it are gonna get packed. Roger's about to mess with the, the thing there, it's making me really nervous. Um, if you eat excess protein, it's gonna be stored as fat, as calories, it's gonna turn into glucose, this is true. But excess is a lot of protein. Like You would have to be going over two and three times your uh, requirement before you really need to start worrying. Now, if you're doing all of that and you're not losing weight, you might want to cut your protein down. But that is not where I would start. I would start with making sure you're tracking appropriately, that your carbs are not too high. That's the logical place to start. And Mary Beth, in, in, in response to your question about um, being, um, you know, have, not having eaten well all your life, let me tell you, uh, despite my best efforts, I have not eaten well all my life. So I'm 52, which means I had surgery around 46, 47, somewhere in there, uh, and I had to counteract a lifetime of not eating well. It does take me a lot longer to lose weight. Anecdotally and scientifically, women who are close to 40, who have had children, who have an autoimmune disease, uh, you know, including polycystic ovarian syndrome. Honey, what are you doing? It's very distracting. Just trying to get your bone to where it doesn't die. Okay. Um, Women who are close to 40, who've had children, who have an autoimmune disease, uh, and who have thyroid problems, we, are, we have the toughest time losing. And if you have been overweight all your life, you are probably insulin resistant, which means your whole insulin sugar mechanism needs to be reset. It will take a while. You will not lose weight as fast as someone uh, who has not been overweight for very long. You will lose it if you keep doing it. It's just going to be a, a harder slog for some of us than it is for others. Ask if it's okay. If it's okay is okay. everything okay? Can everybody hear? Okay, so Sherry Duncan says she's type 2 diabetic. She's done keto and intermittent fasting. She's reduced insulin. Um, okay, so Sherry, if you've lost 42 pounds over six months, you're doing amazingly well. Uh, where to go from here is um, if you have less than 10 or 15 pounds to lose, um, you know, you might need to look into your total calorie levels and see if you need to reduce those. Um, for me, for the last 10 pounds, I had to intermittent fast. And in my case, the only type of fasting that really helped me was alternate day 500 calories. Now, I don't know what the answer is for you. I routinely fast um, 16 hours, three or four times a week just to maintain my weight. Um, but to lose weight, I have to be at 800 calories and I have to be under 40 grams of carbs and then I have to intermittent fast. It's ridiculous what I had to do to lose weight. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're close to your goal weight, you may need to step up the fasting and or reduce the calories. Okay. Um, yeah, so Wanda, what's going on with you is very, very typical. It just, is, it takes a while. See, here's the thing. When you start to lose weight, your body's metabolism starts to slow down a little bit and change a little bit. Think about it this way. Let's say that you were running out of money in your bank account and you kept spending at the same pace that you were, you're going to be in trouble, right? Like you're going to be bankrupt pretty soon. Your body does not want to create a situation where it's still burning the same amount of calories as when you were eating a lot more. So when we eat less, it slows down a little bit. And then homeostasis is established. It understands that it's going to get fed regularly and I'm oversimplifying and anthropomorphizing your body and not sounding scientific, but the, the principle is the same. It takes a little bit of an adjustment before it will drop again. And then it needs to stabilize. I think of it as it's doing housekeeping types of things and then it's going to drop again. Okay. Hey Martin, how are you? Um, how much fat loss is offset by muscle gain? Okay, so um, you really need to take pictures of yourself in your underwear. I, I don't know what else to tell you. You're going to have to take pictures of yourself in your underwear because the difference is going to be night and day. So when I lost 80 pounds um, on a keto diet, I think I lost um, 10 pounds of muscle and 70 pounds of fat. And I never was able to exercise. I have RA, I wasn't able to exercise. Um, so in that case, what happened for me was, um, you know, I just ate high protein and uh, high fat and low carbs. 
uh, and I've heard of you know many many people in the same situation as me. So there is, as I think, my understanding is that as long as you keep your protein levels healthy, uh, you're very very unlikely to lose muscle mass. Now, if you start cutting on your protein drastically, especially while you're being a gym rat, um, you're not being good to your body. So I would not do that. So in your case, you know, if you wanted to go 0 0.7, 0 0.8 uh, grams of protein for your body for every pound of uh, body weight, that may not be a bad thing if you're a serious gym rat. Okay, um, yeah, you gotta track your carbs. Seniors need more protein than younger people. Um, actually, the, I, I have not heard that to be the case. I think what happens is that as we eat less, uh, you know, sometimes when you're, uh, as you get older, your metabolism is slower, uh, and sometimes your appetite is reduced. Uh, and in that case, you have to eat protein first. So like when I had surgery, I had to eat protein first because I was eating so few calories um, that you know I really, there was no room for me to fill with fat or with, with anything else. So I had to get my protein first and then I had to look at fat around it. Now I think for weight loss, that's actually a very good thing for anybody because either you burn the ketones from the fat that you're eating or you're gonna burn it off your body. If you keep eating fat, if you keep eating calories, there's no reason for your body to dig into its reserves. You're trying to create a situation where you're near, you have the, your body has the same response as if you were not eating, which is a flat blood sugar, uh, a flat insulin level, near flat insulin level, and no easily available uh, fuel that is coming in through your mouth, okay? So you're approximating the circumstances of fasting uh, without actually going without eating for, for months on end, which would be not tolerable for most of us, okay? All right. Um, yeah, I, I do hear better when Roger's not bumping the, the camera. So uh, Roger was messing around with the thing hoping my phone wouldn't die, which is why everything was shaking. Okay, I'm going to repeat for those of you who joined. Uh, ketosis is a metabolic state. Food is a way to get you there. The best way to get into ketosis is to fast. Since that would make us completely miserable, what you have to do is you have to create a situation where your body is not getting fuel very easily from sources such as carbs, from sources such as constantly eating. You're either feasting or you're fasting. If you're feasting, which means you have eaten or have eaten within the last four hours, three to four hours, your insulin is up. If your insulin is up, your body's not gonna burn fat. So you want to eat the type of things that don't raise your insulin. What doesn't raise your insulin? Fat. Fat doesn't raise your insulin. The next thing that doesn't raise your insulin is protein. The thing that does raise your insulin is carbs. So. You need to keep the carbs to a, a, a limit, whether that limit for you is 20 grams or 40 grams. You need to eat all your protein because you don't want to lose muscle mass while this is happening and protein keeps you full. Uh, there's, uh, it's a negative thermogenic effect, which means it takes calories to burn protein. Uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons to eat protein. If you're still hungry, eat fat. Fat tastes good. Fat helps uh, slow down the absorption of any carbs that you might have ingested. Um, fat has many, many uh, great properties for our bodies, including the fact that it keeps us full for a lot longer so you don't eat as much. If you've eaten all your protein, you haven't exceeded your carbs, and you're not hungry, don't eat. Don't eat. This whole thing about starvation, right? Like here, here's the reality about starvation. The calories in, calories out theory was debunked a long time ago. There is not a linear relationship between how many calories you consume uh, and how many calories you burn and weight. The type of calories matters, your metabolism matters, your stage in life matters, what else you're doing matters. A lot of these, these things matter. So essentially it is true that if you eat less, your body's gonna slow down. It's the bank account analogy. If you have less money, you're gonna spend less, otherwise you're gonna be bankrupt. So your body will slow down. But during World War II, uh, the French and Germans were on what were called starvation diets, which is 800 calories, which by the way is what I have to eat to lose weight, okay? The French and German, and many others as well, right? Like we're on 800 calorie diets, but I'm saying French and German because they were the ones who were studied through this time period. Okay, they all lost weight. Every one of them lost weight. Could they have lost faster if they'd been eating more calories? I don't know, but on 800 calories, human beings lose weight. So it's true it'll slow your metabolism down a little bit, but you don't have a choice. You have to create a situation where your body's harvesting its own fat in order to survive. Uh, and the way, again, to do that, don't eat carbs, uh, eat protein wisely, eat fat if you're hungry, and if you're not hungry, don't eat fat. Okay, exogenous ketones. Okay, so uh, Linda, I will answer, um, I will answer your snacks question. Um, Mary Beth, the food, if you're hungry, eat fat. 
If, so here's what I do. I try to, and I'll show you this in the tips uh, weeks one through four. If I'm hungry, the first thing I do is I look at my clock and see how long it's been. If it hasn't been three or four hours since my last meal, the first thing I do is I drink a big glass of liquid. Tea, water, you know, uh, whatever you want. Drink a big glass of liquid and drink it fairly quick so it's sloshing about in your stomach. It distends your stomach. It makes you feel full. If that doesn't cut it, eat a fat bomb because again, remember, your job is to not make your blood sugar spike, not make your insulin spike, and to create ketones which are created from fat. Okay, Fat won't make your blood sugar spike, it won't make your insulin spike, it creates ketones that your brain uses for fuel and so you feel better. Snacks are not necessarily a no-no. You can, what I would suggest to you is that you plan snacks. So one of the things that I do is when I'm trying to get back into ketosis, I eat, um, I try to go on a four hour schedule. So eight o'clock, 12 o'clock, four o'clock, eight o'clock. That's four meals, little, little meals that I can have, okay? For some people that works, for some people they're better off just not eating. On the days I'm fasting, I skip breakfast, I skip lunch, I eat at 2.30 for the first time. You can have snacks, you just have to be cautious about them being planned. Uh, not, you know, any random time, you have to not get into grazing. And I would suggest that you eat snacks that are heavy in protein and fat for satiety and for keeping your uh, insulin low. Okay, um, how, do, how do I feel about exogenous ketones? There is uh, zero evidence that uh, exogenous ketones will help you burn body fat. So when you pee on a strip, it's going to test as positive, uh, but there is no evidence that that is going to help get you into ketosis faster. Ketosis is when your body is using fat for fuel. It does that when you don't give it easily, easily digestible fuels and when you don't feed it all the time. Okay, so you, it'll make you feel better in, when you pee on a strip, but it's not going to help you lose weight. So I personally have never used them. Let me tell you what else I've never used. That I would really ask question, ask yourself whether you truly need this. Pee strips, breath monitors, blood monitors, exogenous ketones. There's a whole market around these things. Let me tell you how those uh, pee strips work. So initially, when you're trying to get into ketosis, it is a helpful thing to have because you need some biofeedback as to whether you're getting there or not, okay? Now here's the thing, people play games with those. They're like, oh my God, mine is dark purple. This is like being pregnant, y'all. Either you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. If you're in ketosis, you're burning fat. It doesn't matter what color that pea strip turn. So you do not have to strive for deep ketosis. You just need to be in ketosis. Don't complicate this. The blood meters, the, the uh, breath meters, I have seen them drive people absolutely batshit crazy. Oh my God, I have a potty mouth. I have to be really careful when I'm talking, so I just, I'm, you can just pretend like I didn't say that word right now. It drives people crazy. Here's the thing, initially when those things will work well, a pee strip will work well for you because it'll catch all the ketones. It's catching excess ketones that you're spilling. Over time, what happens is the type of ketones you, spl you spill change. As you get fat adapted, the type of ketones you spill change. Those pea strips don't pick up that. So when you're in deep ketosis and well fat adapted, the, the strips aren't gonna pick it up. What's more, the, the strips only pick up the excess ketones that you're spilling into your urine, okay? When your body is efficient at burning the fat for, for energy, you're not spilling those. So at a time when you should be feeling really good about yourself, those strips will make you feel like crap. So I would really, really suggest to you that you think hard about whether or not you need those, those testing mechanisms. Here's what's gonna happen when you're in ketosis. Your breath is gonna smell. You're not gonna be that hungry. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I have to force myself to eat when I'm in ketosis. It's, to me, it's the number one most freeing thing about being uh, in, in ketosis is I'm not constantly thinking about what I need to eat. I'm not constantly hungry. And I have to say, you know what? It's four o'clock, I should probably eat something. You will know when you're in ketosis and you will, initially you will lose weight. So don't drive yourself crazy with all of those monitors unless you feel like you've tried everything else and nothing is working. You're much better off spending your time tracking and planning your food than you are obsessing about those meters. Yeah, they do make me feel bad <laughs> Yep, okay, so uh, I've covered this one. Here's the thing, eat right, don't overeat, don't eat all the time, don't exceed your carbs, don't eat too much protein, if you're hungry, eat fat. If, you, uh, you know, if you're hungry and it hasn't been three or four hours since you last ate, drink some water. You'll be in ketosis, guys. You don't need to overthink this one. I have on the blog, and I'm going to post this, here's a four-week plan to uh, how to get into ketosis. So here's the problem. 
we all want to be perfect. We all want to just, you know, nail it and get A's all the time. So as soon as you decide you're going to go on a keto diet, you're like, you're trying to eat everything. You're cleaning your pantries, you're tracking, you're doing this, you're doing that, and you're starving and you're miserable. And my team wouldn't even talk to me for the first four days. They're like, when you're going through carb withdrawal, don't talk to me. Just let me know when you're done. And you know, there's so much going on and it doesn't need to be that way. I'm going to tell you, as a psychologist, that self-efficacy and a feeling of achievement is the number one way to change your behavior. The more you feel like you're succeeding, the more likely you are to do something. You constantly feel like you fail, you're going to quit. So we're at, you, if you follow this plan, which I will post it, we have these week one to four tips, and Jennifer actually posted it and we, we pinned that post, but you give up certain foods, you eat certain foods. You're not even tracking. Then you try to go four hours between meals, you drink a lot of water. Then you reduce fruit, you go 12 hours between. There's a whole plan here that many, many people, Mary Jane is on. Mary Jane can tell you she has lost a ton of weight by just following this plan. Um, so has Jennifer. There are a lot of people in the group that have lost weight. Uh, so I would urge you to, to do that. And then, how are we for time? Is everybody doing okay? So monitoring your blood glucose, Wanda, that's a very interesting question. So monitoring your blood glucose is, is, is vital if you're a T2 diabetic and of course T1, but if you're a T2, it's absolutely vital that you monitor your blood sugar. I typically um, don't recommend that we do that as long as you're eating right if you're not diabetic. So here's the thing, what's going to make your blood sugar go up is going to be simple carbs uh, and carbs in general. If you're not eating carbs, you need to quit warning about how much your blood sugar is going up. Standard American diet is 300 carbs a day. A very low calorie, very low, sorry, very low carb diet for ketosis is under 40 grams. Between 40 and 300 is a lot of room for improvement. A lot of people eat 100 grams of carbs a day and do much better. They lose weight, they do just fine. For some of us, it doesn't work. For me, it doesn't work. For me, I, if I eat 100 grams of carbs a day, I put on weight. So I have to be at under 40 for weight loss and I have to be somewhere between 70 and 80 for maintenance. Okay, so your magic number is going to vary, but do not drive yourself bat batty by constantly testing. Watch what you eat. Don't eat all the time. Don't exceed your carbs. Don't eat too much protein if, you, if, you, uh, you know, if you're monitoring it. And if you're hungry, eat fat. And drink water all the time to make sure that you're not confusing hunger with thirst. You will be in ketosis. It's literally that simple, guys. Don't overthink it. Trust me on this one. Okay. One of the things that's not allowed in the two sleevers group is saying, but that's not keto. Okay. I want to give you an example of why context matters. So many of us choose to not eat corn or not eat soy or not eat dairy because we find that we don't do well with it. So when I eat sugar, I get a rheumatoid arthritis flare up. There are other people who have that reaction to dairy. Choosing not to eat those foods is a very legitimate and a very smart choice in that situation. It has nothing to do with whether or not it, a food is keto. If you have eaten nothing all day, if you've eaten nothing all day, you plan to eat one meal, and you pick up a corn tortilla, it has 13 grams of carbs in it. And you say, you know what, I'm gonna put half of that into my chili because I think Urbishi's chili tastes better with the corn tortilla that she specified. If that's all the carbs you ate that day, six grams of carbs, you could actually have half a corn tortilla. Heck, you could have the whole corn tortilla. Those are the only carbs you ate that day. If you are the type of person that came in ketosis at 50 grams of carbs, you could eat corn. You could eat, you know, a whole bowl of carrots, right? If you exercise like mad and you're very, very um, easily able to metabolize carbs, you could eat a very different level of carbs than somebody like me could eat. So saying that's not keto is ignoring the context of what that person has eaten all day, what their body type is like, how things function. There is an exception to that rule that I will state, which is there are certain things that will spike your blood sugar and spike your insulin. And when that happens, you will stop burning fat and uh, you're giving your body easy to consume fuel. And those are simple carbohydrates. So white flour, sugar, honey, you know, uh, sugar in all of its forms. Those things are extreme, you know, even like um, uh, processed foods like pasta or, um, you know, th just white foods basically. Those things are very, very easily metabolized into energy. They do cause blood sugar swings. They do cause insulin swings. So I personally avoid them because I am very, very insulin resistant. If you are not, you may be able to work in some of those foods in your diet. So saying that's not keto ignores the context. And again, you know, people will say to me, but keto is about avoiding soy. Keto is about avoiding corn. No, ketosis is a metabolic state. Food is a guideline to get you there. We all get there in different ways. 
Everybody's going to get there if they're, you know, uh, under 20 grams or of carbs. Some people will get there under 50 grams of carbs. Uh, so you don't, you know, you don't know what else that person has eaten that day, what their blood chemistry is like. And that is why in our group we don't say that's not keto. Okay. Um, okay, so glass of wine. So in, the information here is very controversial. So again, uh, you know, they'll say there's not a lot of sugar in the wine, right? Um, okay, here's what's happening though. There is some sugar and you are giving your body an immediate burst of readily available carbs. So I don't know that uh, it's fair to say that it does nothing for your blood sugar. Is it possible to fit a glass of wine into a ketogenic diet? Yes, because all that you have to do is control what else you eat around it. Some of us have a blood sugar spi a spike with white wine, some of us don't have a blood sugar spike. Here's my advice to you. If you're having a half a glass of wine or a glass of wine and you're still in ketosis, you're losing weight, you're feeling good, you're not hungry all the time, have it. If you drink that glass of wine and you want to dive face first into the first cupcake you can find because you're starving by this point, it's probably messing with your blood sugar a little bit, okay? So I can't tell you what it's going to do for your body, but your body will tell you immediately. For me, when I'm out of ketosis, because I've eaten something that has spiked my blood sugar, as the blood sugar crashes, I'm like a ravening beast. Like I want to eat everything in sight. And I know many of you can relate to this. So some of us metabolize alcohol better and some of us don't. I'm like the world's cheapest date. I can't metabolize alcohol to save my life. Like I can feel that much wine. So you know I'm not breaking it down. That may not be an issue for some other people. So I think it's again, you know, you have to accept our own idiosyncrasies for how our bodies work. Okay, yeah. Um, Okay, Betty, this, this may not be, um, Betty, this may not be the best form for you. So I have done my research. I am a scientist. I have read uh, human studies, longitudinal human studies, and that's why I'm recommending this. Um, insulin resistance while on keto. So actually, Morgan, the diet that is prescribed for people that are insulin resistant is a low carbohydrate diet. Um, so, uh, you know, if you look at people who have metabolic syndrome, metabolic syndrome is waist of size to hip size is disproportionate, uh, high triglycerides, high blood pressure, high uh, cholesterol, so hyperlipidemia basically, um, and then a few other symptoms, high cholesterol, anyway, what are those symptoms? For metabolic syndrome, the only way to uh, control that dietarily is via a low carb diet. Um, so for me, I was insulin resistant. I had uh, this thing on my back called acanthosis niagarcans, which is like black pigmentation on the back and in, on the folds of your body. Uh, I was that insulin resistant. And actually, my hairdresser caught it and said, there's something going on on your neck. And when I went to see the endocrinologist, she said, you developed insulin resistance from the constantly being overweight. Um, so I, I am now not as uh, insulin resistant as I, as I was before. And for me, it was keto that had to get me there. There wasn't a, a different way for me to do it. Okay, what else? Um, all right. So let me um, let me just recap. Are there any other questions? Are you guys all doing well? Is this being helpful for you? Do you have other questions? All right, I'm going to recap here by saying ketosis is a metabolic state. Food is a way to get you there. Okay. There is a whole printable on two sleevers for what to eat while on a ketogenic diet, things that will help you um, make you feel good, that will fill you, that taste good, things that you can feed your family, no weird foods. Um, so go onto, the, go onto the website, look under free downloads and you'll find a download for the um, printables. Go into the recipe index and click low carb keto and it'll show you all of the food that you're, uh, you, know, you can enjoy on that diet. Keto isn't weird food, it's meat, it's, it's vegetables, it's dairy, it's nuts, it's avocados, it's fat. It's delicious things in life. Um, if you have members of your family that are not keto, uh, you know, learn to pair a card for them, whether it's um, potatoes, pasta, rice, whatever the, the things that the rest of us are trying to stay away from, so I won't repeat all of them here. Um, you can always make a side dish of that and feed them the main meal you're eating. So I try to create meals that the whole family can enjoy with one or two additions or, or uh, deletions. Keto is a metabolic state. It, food is a way to get you there. A particular food isn't necessarily keto or non-keto. Four things to do, limit your carbs, eat all your protein, if you're hungry, eat fat, eat fat for taste, eat fat to keep you from being, from being starving all the time, if you're not hungry, don't eat, okay? And stop testing constantly and stop worrying about percentages. Let me address one thing about percentages. Let's say that you know, you've been told that keto is 65 to 70% fat, uh, you know, uh, the 30 to 35% protein, 5% carbs. Okay, and a particular day you're not that hungry. So you hit your carb limit, 
you eat your protein and you're just really not that hungry. So now your fat percentage certainly looks like it's 30 or 40% and you're in a panic. You're like, oh my God, my day is just messed up. I eat too much protein. I didn't even quit worrying about it. It isn't about the proportion. A proportion is a guideline. You have to get into ketosis. The way to do that is to not give your body easily available fuel and to not eat foods that spike your blood sugar and spike your insulin. If you do that, you will be fine. You will be in ketosis. You won't be hungry and you will get the benefits that you need to. Okay, so I want you guys to stop worrying about percentages and macros and measuring. Measure until you're pretty sure that you're not eating too many carbs and then do whatever. Some of us do, I do better with tracking. Some people don't do well with tracking. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about macros. Don't worry about hitting all the levels perfectly. Don't worry about eating all the fats and don't worry about not eating if you're not hungry. If you just do those things, you will be in great shape. Okay, my four rules. Um, is it safe to do a keto egg fast? So the keto egg fast um, is a shortcut way of getting into ketosis. So when you do an egg fast, you, there's, you're eating almost no carbs. Uh, the yolk is giving you fat. The albumin and the yolk together are giving you protein. It's just a really fast way to control your uh, macros. So there's nothing magical about an egg fast per se. It's just as a no-brainer. Eat eggs, eat butter, eat eggs, eat butter. You don't have to think. You don't have to meal plan. So my recommendation to you would be that it's very, very um, unlikely that your body will get all the nutrients that it needs from a prolonged egg fast. So typically people will recommend doing that for two or three days. That's long enough to get you into ketosis. Um, again, it's a, it's a, I wouldn't say a gimmick, but it's a mnemonic. It's a heuristic. It's a quick way to get into it. You could, get into, uh, you could get into ketosis by eating nothing but butter chicken every day over uh, cauliflower rice if you so choose. Um, or you know, eating uh, crab and avocado salads every day or egg salad or chicken salad. Or um, actually, you know what? I'm working on 30 minute keto recipes. So if you look on the website right now, they're, you know, they're all Instant Pot, etc. recipes. But it's very, you can achieve the same results. So the keto egg fast, the only thing it does is it makes it easy. You don't have to count your macros. It'll get you into ketosis. My recommendation is don't do it over two or three days because you're not getting a wide range of nutrients which your body really needs in order to keep going. Okay? Uh, how long should it take to get into ketosis once you start the work? So it depends on how strict you are with what it is you're eating and how often you're eating. So it's not unusual for it. So there's a difference between being in ketosis and being fat adapted that I should address. Being in ketosis means that you're spilling ketones, you're producing ketones. Fat adapted means that your body prefers to use fat for fuel rather than anything else. When you're fat adapted, you can go long hours uh, without eating. So you're metabolically more flexible. So I, if I have to skip a meal, when I'm in ketosis and fat adapted, it doesn't bother me in a way that it might the rest of the time because my body is flexible and can adapt to a different type of an eating schedule than it might normally. Um, so, you know, how long it takes differs by person. Uh, so I would say three to four days before you're truly in ketosis and then sometimes it takes up to two weeks to be fat adapted where you're not constantly struggling against hunger, having to eat fat bombs, having to drink water, etc. So give yourself time and just know that it's going to happen in time as long as you keep doing it. Um, okay, what? Okay, so vegetables. Do I count vegetables? So if you look at green leafy vegetables, um, if you look at the carb counts in those, they're ridiculously low. So should you count them? I mean, I do, but I count net carbs. So I take the fiber counts out of there. Um, you know, I take all of that out. Realistically, if you decided not to count green leafy vegetables, you would be okay. Now, if you're eating squash or pumpkin or things that have slightly higher heart, uh, carb counts, you probably should count it. If you find that you're unable to eat any vegetables at all because you're watching your carb counts like a hawk, maybe ease up on yourself a little bit. I mean, you know, you're not gonna get fat from eating broccoli. You're really just not. Uh, and there, uh, those types of vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, for example, don't create a huge uh, blood sugar spike. Keep in mind, again, it's not that a food is keto or not keto. It's in the context of what you've eaten that day. And it's what it does to your blood sugar and to your insulin levels. If eating a huge bowl of steamed broccoli with tons of butter and cheese on it keeps you from being hungry and keeps you from not eating for the next four hours, have at it. That those may be the only carbs you have that day. So I think, you know, for me, I, I tend to eat a lot of um, meat and a lot of vegetables and a lot of dairy. That's my diet. I'll have a handful of nuts because they are high calorie. Um, if I'm really, really hungry at night, I have half an avocado with salt and pepper, or I make a cheese chip in the microwave in 90 seconds, and that's typically my snack. Sometimes I'll have um, deli meat, cheese, and pickles at night if I'm just really, really starving. 
So again, you know, there's a way to bake in all of these things into your life in, a, in an easy way. So uh, ketone hypothyroidism, so again, uh, I am hypothyroid. And uh, what I have read is that again, for a thyroid diet, um, uh, you know, metabolic syndrome diet, PCOS diet, what, what all of those diets have in common is low carb. Uh, the level of carbs might differ, but they all recommend um, a low carb diet. As far as using the onion masala, again, Swap, now I want you to think about, don't think of a food as keto or not keto. How much masala? What else have you eaten that day? Are you over 20 to 40 grams of carbs? A masala has onion, tomato, and ginger garlic, all of which are, you know, by themselves high carb. But if you're putting in this much masala into your portion of curry, it's not going to kill you. It's probably not going to take you over your carb limit. So don't think of a food as yes or no, unless it's things like sugar, potatoes, bread, pasta are things that are quick, easy, simple carb energy uh, that's going to make your blood sugar spike. But for vegetables, just be smart about it. I can't eat potatoes uh, without you know getting out of ketosis. Um, I can eat a fourth of a cup of corn and not have it bother me. So you've got to figure out what works for you on that one. Okay. Um, so is it important to do a keto diet under the guidance of a doctor? Uh, I, you know, I don't know what to tell you on that. I think it's going to be your own comfort level. I didn't. I did it on my own. Uh, but I also read every piece of research I could find that was on longitudinal human studies. So read The Obesity Diet by Jason Fung. These are in, in our pinned post in the keto group. Uh, read the Vulcan Finney book uh, on uh, something something carbohydrates and then read the Gary Taubes book on why we get fat. Um, all of those cover the human studies in great detail and then you can make a decision for yourself. Okay, I think that's it. I think if you guys are good, I'm good. Um, I'm going to make all of these available. So this has um, what is ketosis, how to get into ketosis, um, why you're eating less uh, of carbs, fat, and protein. Um, I'm, I also taped a three-part series on these topics, uh, which also has one additional one, which is myth-busting, busting keto myths. And those are longer videos. I don't know how many of you wanted to watch a long video, so I figured I would do a live so I could answer some questions. And, um, you know, I'm in the groups. You know where to find me. So I appreciate your watching. Um, yes, uh, uh, Steve, the recommended reading. Uh, Jennifer, would you mind my posting it for him? Uh, it's in the pinned post. So I've, I've posted the three studies, that the three books that we recommend that everybody read because they're all based on longitudinal human studies um, you know and the experimental design on those is pretty good um, so we can we can find that one and where am I in the country well today I'm in Dallas uh, but I'm not always in Dallas I have a house in the DFW area but I travel a lot so that's where I am any other questions guys before I let you go all right. Well, thank you very much. I have, uh, I, you know what I really wish? I really wish we could have a camera so I could see you guys. Like, I, I want to see your faces as I'm talking to you, and I don't get to do that, which is kind of unfortunate, but maybe one day technology will change. Anyway, I, I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I'm Urvashi. My blog is twosleevers.com. Uh, I have a new keto desserts book that's out. I would really, really appreciate it if you were going to buy it, if you would pre-order it, because Amazon looks at pre-orders to determine whether or not to advertise a book. Uh, it's called Keto Sweet Treats, Desserts, Fat Bombs, something like that. And it's got, you know, a whole bunch of dessert recipes. And then it has breads, pancakes, scones, uh, muffins, pies, cakes, like all the stuff that I used to miss so much. Uh, you know, they're all in there. And many of them are no-cook recipes. So, like, I hope, I hope you check that out. All right. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you for watching. And I will see you on the other side of this camera. If I can get my husband to come turn the camera off, that is. Thank you. Roger? Yeah. See, you know, Roger turns his hearing aids off so that he doesn't have to listen to me. So he probably can't hear me right now when I'm calling him, but we'll see if he shows up. All right. Canceled. Yeah. Sound like it went well. Oh yeah, it was fun. <laughs>